Nine facts about Satan and powers of darkness you must know. Well, it's good to know so you can guard yourself from the enemy. I'll be sharing from the Bible and my own personal experiences, as well as things I've heard from other pastors. But first, make sure you subscribe so you can get more awesome teaching and encouragement for your Christian walk. Hi guys, I'm George Chuang. When the Bible and Bible teachers say Satan, we sometimes also mean the demons, depending on the context. Satan is the head, so he is responsible for all evil. Number one, they can move physical objects and even levitate people. I've heard numerous accounts from credible pastors about people levitating off the ground. And I don't mean like magic shows where the magician levitates. Those are done by gimmicks. But places where there is heavy demonic activity, some people awake to find themselves levitating off the bed. It all depends on the type of demon and their power. Bible says in Matthew 4, 5, Then the devil took him up into the city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Bible says the devil set Jesus on the pinnacle. How did the devil get Jesus to the top? He probably levitated Jesus to the top. Look, Jesus, by my power, I brought you up to the top. Now, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down and the angels will catch you. And the devil likes to quote scripture. Matthew 4, 6, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. When I was in college, we did a lot of praying, fasting, and worship. Then one day as I sat on the living room couch, the CD player started to play all by itself. The CD player would power on and start playing. At first, I didn't tell my roommate because I thought he might get a bit spooked. I'm more used to this kind of activity. Then one day, as he was studying in his room, his CD player started to play all by itself. He ran out and was a bit spooked, so I told him about the living room stereo. And throughout the year, the CD player would randomly play. And once the alarm was even set, so the CD player would go off around midnight. Another time, I was driving to a worship conference. As I was driving on the freeway, I heard a high-pitched screech in one of my ears. And I knew something was up, so I started praying, and immediately one of my tires go out. But I wasn't going to let the devil ruin my day, so I praised the Lord as I changed my tire and kept on worshiping. Different types of demons will have different types of powers. A Korean pastor who laid hands on me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit told the story of how a demon dragged him out of his prayer room during a 40-day fast. He prayed until the sun rose after that. And I will be 100% honest, although I know my position and authority in Christ, it's still creepy! Creepy! Number two, they can afflict your body with strange pain. The Apostle Paul was afflicted by the devil. He said in 2 Corinthians 12:7. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Satan will come against you to afflict you if he can. It might be to discourage you, to stop you, or simply to make you miserable. Once I was fasting and praying for a certain breakthrough, and when I started this particular fast, I could not lift my arm more than halfway. There was a sharp pain in my shoulder, and I knew it was the devil. When I had completed my fast and took the first bite of food, my arm was completely well again. I knew the devil was simply trying to discourage me and inflict me. But if he's coming against you, then know it's because you are effective and you're stepping into his territory. Number three, 
They can cause sickness, disease, and other infirmities. Luke 13, 11. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. This is a spirit of infirmity, an evil spirit that likes to cause disease or sickness or some type of bondage. She was bent over, probably had some growth or a hump on her back. I've seen it on people. Jesus heals her on the Sabbath, and the Jews complain. So Jesus replied, So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? Jesus says Satan has bound her. Now it may not have been Satan himself, because verse 11 told us it was a spirit of infirmity. But I said in the beginning of this message that Satan is responsible because he is the head of the demonic realm. He takes the blame. By the way, this does not mean Satan causes all sickness, disease, and infirmity, although he does cause a lot of it. God was very clear to Moses when he said in Exodus 4.11, So the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth, or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Why God causes some to be born this way is another topic. Now the devil can also cause people to be deaf and mute. That's why Jesus rebuked unclean spirits. Mark 9.25 When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Death and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. So this boy had an unclean spirit that caused him to be deaf and mute. Jesus simply casts out the demon. But not everyone who is deaf and mute has a demon. Mark 7, starting in verse 32. Then they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude, and put his fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed, uh, and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open. Immediately his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. Why didn't Jesus just cast out the demon like he did with the boy? Because there was no demon to cast out. You see a lot of Pentecostal preachers trying to cast out demons from people. But a lot of these folks don't have demons. They have a physical infirmity that is not demon related. Jesus always knew how to pray for people because he was in tune with God and God was with him in power. When I was a kid, I got sick on a visit to Taiwan once. No one in my family was Christian at the time, but they went to inquire at the local Taoist priest or Buddhist monk, I don't remember. But the belief is if a dead relative talks to you, then you'll become ill. So they inquired of the spirits and the message was, so and so talked to George, a dead relative that had passed away. So they did the prayers and gave me a glass of water from the shrine to drink. I drank the water and soon after, I was perfectly fine again, eating normal and feeling great. So demons can make you sick and then make you well. But making you well is very limited in power. A demon may cause one of your cells or a group of cells to mutate and become cancerous. The cancer will spread all on its own. The demons can't undo that. Only the power of God can undo that. God can make the cancer disappear or pop out of your body. God can create new and perfect healthy cells. This is something the demons cannot do. Creating out of nothing is the power of God. Making things disappear is the power of God. Demons create sickness by damaging what's already there. If something is damaged, then only God can heal. Now demons can create a false sign. They temporarily stop your hearing, take away your eyesight, make you sick, or whatever. 
until you perhaps go to the local shaman. Then they pretend to heal you through this religion. But if an organ is damaged, only the power of God can heal that. So the demons made me sick. But then the demons also made me well after going to the shrine and drinking the water. This is what you call a false sign. Which leads to number four. Demons are smart and they are liars and deceivers. If you are following a false religion or you're an atheist, they want to keep you in that belief system. So yes, I was made well. So everyone involved will continue to follow that false belief system. If you're a devout atheist, they will probably not make their presence known to you. They are smart. They aren't idiots. Satan has been around since Adam was in the garden. The demons know a thing or two about humans. Those who follow false religions can operate in the word of knowledge, just like Christians can. You might know them as psychics or mediums. These people are definitely tapping into the spirit world. There was a slave girl in Acts that operated this way. Acts 16.16 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. And the reason she was able to bring much profit was because she was good at it. There are many fakes and then there are those who actually have a spirit of divination. These demons watch your very lives. They know what's going on. The difference is they don't know the future. However, they can try their best to make it happen. And since Satan is the god of this world and deceives the whole world, he is often very good at making things happen. A lot of mediums in Asia can be spot on when they prophesy about your future. I've met a couple of them. They don't realize the spirits they are communicating with are demons. Demons are in control of a lot of people's lives. And this is especially true if you're not a Christian. When I say demons are in control, I don't mean they are demon possessed. I'm just saying demons can influence a lot of what people do. How do they control people and influence them? This leads to number five. They can put thoughts into your mind. If a medium prophesies and says, you'll get fired from your job next month, guess what? The demons will be able to get your non-Christian boss to fire you. Even if your boss is a Christian, if he's not completely in sync with Jesus, then the demons can influence his mind and thoughts. It'll be a little bit harder for them, but still possible. It's spiritual warfare. First Chronicles 21, 1. Now Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. Now Satan didn't appear to David and say, Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you go and number Israel? No, Satan simply put the thought into David's mind. David was known as a man after God's own heart. But even Satan was able to get into David's mind. In this case, God allowed it, but it is so much easier for Satan to get into a non-believer's mind. If Satan wants to make someone a rapist, a pedophile, a thief, and such, I'm sure it is easy for him. It all depends on the level of evil a demon is. All a demon has to do is pound the mind with the same sick thoughts over and over again until these people become what they want. Once these people take these sick thoughts into the heart, they will go and do evil all on their own. Although I'm sure the devil helps them. We are encouraged into bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Don't give Satan a place in your mind and heart. Jesus said in Matthew 5 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. James 4 7 resist the devil and he will flee from you don't give him a place in your mind it starts in the mind if you take that thought and meditate on it then
Then it goes into the heart. James 1.14. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Number six, they control certain regions of the world, certain governments and territories. Ephesians 6.12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. These spiritual hosts of wickedness rule in heavenly places. They control territories on earth. When an angel was trying to get a message to Daniel, he couldn't because a demonic power was resisting him. The angel said to Daniel, Daniel 10, 13, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. So this angel just couldn't get the message to Daniel until Michael came and defeated the demonic power there to get the message to Daniel. I believe North Korea is being controlled by a powerful demonic power. And South Korea is being controlled by angelic powers. In 1900, South Korea used to be very poor and about 1% of the population were Christians. Today, it's a very prosperous nation with about 30% of the population identifying as Christian. The Bible is clear about there being rulers of the darkness of this age. The truth really is we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. If a people just aren't coming to the Lord, then it's very likely because of a demonic entity blinding the people and holding them back. But when God's people pray, we can tear down these strongholds and overcome the enemy. If you've been to some Korean churches, you'll realize those people know how to pray. Also a lot of Chinese house churches, they'll pray long and hard for hours. This causes the church to grow and changes the course of nations. Now if you enter the territory of a powerful demon, he might manifest himself. They do sometimes manifest when you enter their territory. I've heard so many pastors share their stories about shamans and witch doctors. And when a missionary enters their territory, the demons manifest and appear. But when they manifest, then rejoice in the Lord because you are a serious threat and you are effective. Expect God to work mightily. That's why they are coming against you. You only send in the troops when a threatening force is coming. But you run with Jesus, and the gates of hell will not prevail. You go and take the land. Be in tune with Jesus, the captain of your faith. Man, sometimes I feel like these messages are really preached to encourage me to keep going. But I do hope it encourages you also. Number seven, they enjoy inflicting pain and suffering on people. Demons are out to harm people. The harm they do depends on the level of evil. There was a severely demon-possessed man in Mark 5.5. 5. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. The demons enjoyed inflicting pain and hearing the man cry out as he cut himself with stones. I believe the desire to hurt yourself comes from the voice of the devil. Some young girls like to cut themselves. A voice puts them down and causes them to hate themselves. And to relieve this self-hatred, they cut themselves. If you're a cutter, know, Christian, that what you're hearing is the voice of the devil. Run to Jesus and listen to the Lord only. Don't give the devil any room in your mind. Thoughts to hurt yourself is always from the devil. Number eight, 
Satan accuses us day and night before God. Speaking of Satan in a future war with Michael the Archangel, it says in Revelation 12.10, For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Satan is known as the accuser and he accuses us day and night for a reason. It's to stop God's blessing and work in our lives. And not only that, but it's also to make us feel bad for any failure we may have. If you have any sin or failure in your life, Satan will beat you over the head with it again and again until you are completely defeated. He'll tempt you to do evil and if you give in, he'll accuse you to God saying, look how he has failed miserably. You cannot bless this man. So what do you do? You do what the saints did in Revelation 12, 11, the next verse. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. You confess the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you of all sin. You ask for forgiveness and accept that your righteousness is found in Jesus Christ alone. Believing in him makes you righteous. Do not approach God on a works-based righteousness. The good works we do is to show that we follow Christ. But these good works are not what makes me righteous. When you do good works, your attitude should be, Lord, I am an unprofitable servant doing what was my duty to do. This is the attitude Jesus told us to have. Number nine, they want to destroy your life and take you to hell with them. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Satan and his demons are examining your life. They are looking for any opportunity they may have to devour you. So you must be vigilant, be sober, know your enemy well. This is a spiritual battle. No warrior goes into the battlefield without having first studied his enemy. No fighter gets in a ring without first studying his opponent's strength and weaknesses. Ephesians 6.11 Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We definitely don't want to put too much attention on the devil, but we should be educated enough to know his wiles. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the master. Beware of things that seek to distract you from the love of Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with God's love, and go out in strength. And if your life is just blessed and the Lord just has his hedges of protection around you, then rejoice in the Lord, my friends. And may you continue to be blessed by God. Bless your people, Lord, and may your church prevail in Jesus' name. Amen. This is George Chong teaching from China. You can help support this teaching ministry. If you enjoy these videos, the links are down below. Thank you guys for being part of this ministry. May the Lord reward you many times over. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, let us continue to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.